hello from slide node and hello from weaves in the first vid we talked about how we can take your strings or your fixed pieces of text put all of them together at one place called values.xml in the second vid we talked about your user interface controls that are called views in android and how they are managed by this invisible rectangle which is also called a view group the simplest type of view group is a linear layout in the third vid that is this current vid we are going to get dirty with the code and I'm going to show you exactly how each section of the code works. All right. So let me go ahead. So first you have your text view. You define this in XML inside any file, which is activity underscore main dot XML. I have given it a name. You can give it any name you want. Now you have to specify its width and height, how much space it's going to take up on the screen that you do with the help of these two parameters, wrap content and match span it. We have discussed these two in the last vid. Next. You specify what text it is going to display. It's going to display hello world. And this hello world text is de defined inside your XML. If you remember, right, we gave it a name, hello underscore world. And that is the same thing we are referring over here. Then this is inside your view group, which is linear layout in our case, which is the simplest type of view group you have. You have a width for the view group also. Again, if you remember, you have the controls, you give a width and height to them the same way you have the view groups. That is the things which are responsible for managing your controls. Again, we have to specify a width and height for them also. And then we specify that it's horizontal in nature. It's going to have all the things stacked one near each other, not one below each other. So we are going to say it's horizontal. And last but not the least, we are going to say that the schema for all these tags are defined at this URL over here. Now remember, you don't have to write all this. Your Android or your Eclipse ADT takes care of making all these things for you. But it's important you understand how these things work. So in the next uh, slide, I'm going to show you exactly what is the most important file in your Android app. So if you remember, here is your manifest file, which is the most important piece of information you can have. It is made up of four important parts. You have your manifest tag over here. This is the place where you're going to specify what your package is, what is your version of your app and stuff like that. Then you have your users SDK where you're going to say that this is the minimum Android version for which I'm making my app. And this is the actual targeted version for which I plan my users to, I mean, get my app. And next you have your application tag where you're going to say uh, features like themes, icons, stuff like that. Not much important. So I'm not going to discuss about application stuff over here. And last but not the least, you have your activity tag inside which you specify what is your main screen. Now, if you see this screen over here, hello world, your Android apps are made up of screens. Now, each of these screen is called an activity. Now, there may be several activities, but like Java, you have one main function the same way you have one main activity that is going to be launched when your app is started, right? So here I'm going to specify all the details. So first talking about manifest, you have your package, you take which package you have your code de de deployed in. If you remember your Java cl class files and Java dot Java files are placed inside packages. And that's exactly what follows in Android 2. This version is for your app 1.0 1, 1 numeric and string representation of the same thing. Uses SDK as I said, I want to develop my app for a minimum honeycomb platform. That is, I have said minimum SDK version is 11. Target SDK version is 17. I'm saying that even though my minimum is honeycomb, I'm going actually making my app for jelly bean. That's the target SDK version. And then you have your application which has certain tags inside it which are not much important. They are self-explanatory. If you need me to explain those, I'm going to take them up in a separate vid. Activity. Here, I'm going to say the name of my Java file which is launched when my Android app is started. And then I specify the name of my thing which is your uh, hello world. You see this piece of text over here? This capital hello world above? That is exactly what this is. At the rate string slash app underscore name. Now there is one piece which was missing in the last manifest explanation which I talked about and that is when uh, what happens when you open your app section in your mobile and see now here if you see there is no sign of your hello world anywhere right what you want is you want this you want your hello world to appear in this app list like uh, what you call like the other apps which you have pre-installed so for that you have to write one extra piece of code inside your activity you have your activity the same thing you give it a name the same thing label here you have something called intent filter. Now this intent filter is a separate concept which we are going to take up in a separate bit. But for now, what you need to know is when you write this piece of text from intent filter to over here, you're telling the Android system that dude, I want to appear in the main list. Can you please put me there? And your Android system says, yeah, right. We'll put you there. So this is what your intent filter does. The last but not the least, moving on to Java code. You have your package slide note dot in my case. 
and you have your class which is main activity you can give it any name you know that now it extends activity any screen in your android that wants to display itself extends activity it has a function called on create which forms a part of its life cycle where you have your bundle save instance defined now if you're wondering what this bundle thing is all about don't worry too much about it we'll get into it in detail for now you just need to remember that your on create takes a parameter called bundle and then whenever you use any standard lifecycle methods in android you have to make sure that you call the super class implementation of that method by saying super dot on create you're telling the android system that hey i'm calling on create you also call on create on activity which is you're saying you're calling your parents uh, on create stuff and last but not the least you have to specify right you have to specify which is your appearance file now how does your java code know that where is your appearance defined you have to say hey dude this is where the appearance is defined. It's defined inside r.layout.activity underscore main. This is the file where you wrote all those things, linear layout and text view, the width and the height and all the stuff. And you have to say that by calling this method set content view where you specify this file. All right. And last but not the least, you make the necessary imports and bam, you're done. So in this vid, we have covered about the different files. In the next vid, we are going to go into that Eclipse, create the project and get our hands dirty and see if things are coming as per what we have talked so far. So if you like what you saw, please subscribe to my channel, comment, let me know what you think about this. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next vid.